As we move back to what they're calling the image processing portion of the camera, it's important to note here, Canon was notorious for that funny little wheel with so many stops on it. The XL1, XL2, XLH1, all these cameras sort of had a funny wheel with, with several stops on it that people complained about. Well, Canon listened. The wheel still exists, but you don't have to use it anymore. It's got no stops. It doesn't turn. Instead, all of the features that you might want to change are nice, large, very thumb and finger friendly controls on the side of the iris. And it's also sort of organized reasonably. The lens controls are on the lens. You don't have to fiddle around in the back for an iris. Iris is right here. Your image processing controls are in the middle here, the stuff that you might want to do live. Change your white balance, change your gain settings here or here, switch between auto and manual focus. And then all the stuff that you would do in standby mode are in the back of the camera. Here are your menu operations, your audio, you know, um, changing your audio settings. It's important also to note uh, that although we love so much about this camera, every now and then we have to point out one of the shortfalls. Check this out. Your menu button is here. Your menu selector wheel is here. But instead of being able to click that menu selector wheel, you actually have to move your thumb over to this set button. Not a deal breaker. Not a deal breaker at all. But um, you know, we like to be objective and offer suggestions to improve the, the camera. So let's just get back to this center section right here. You've got your shutter settings where you can set it off, on, or select, just like on those broadcast cameras you're used to, where you can sort of switch through your, your, camera, your shutter selections. That's pretty neat, you know, just switch through the, uh, if you're in 60 degrees, you can go 1 60th, 1 100th, and sort of cycle through like that just by clicking that shutter selector. That's pretty awesome. Additionally, on this sort of, oh, excuse me, I'm going to go over to Sherry now with a question coming in from the internet. Yes, um, thanks, Jesse. Uh, Sharon asks how well the ND filter switching works compared to the sticky Sony EX3. All right, Sharon, thanks for watching. Um, I, as always, I'll look forward to your constructive criticism of our show tomorrow. The ND filter starts out pretty good. Uh, it's got nice stops at one, two, and three, all right? But I imagine as a camera ages, you, you might get it, you know, you might find it being a little bit stickier. So a uh, brand new camera feels really good. Make sure, Sharon, to send your camera into Midtown Video for periodic maintenance so that we can clean this kind of thing up and it doesn't get sticky. Hopefully that answers your question. Jesse, I have another question. Another are you, question are you answering or um, can Chucky answer any questions this evening about the Canon 7D or would you like to save those for another time? Uh, we're going to save 7D questions to the end. We definitely want to make use of our technical resources. We want to, you know, celebrate Chucky being in the studio. So towards the end of this Canon XF discussion, maybe we'll come back to your 7D question. How's Thank that you. Great. Cool. All right. So check this out on the monitor here because this is very special. You haven't seen this in any other camera so far. This is the LCD viewfinder. It's a four-inch viewfinder. It's very large, very cool. It works on the left side of the screen. Yeah, and also, check this out, on the right side, bam, pretty awesome, right? You can uh, flip the LCD monitor to either side of the screen. Additionally, if you were a one-man band, you can aim it right at you and click the mirror button, Whoop. Turns, it, turns it right upside down so that you can see yourself if you wanted to, um, you know, make sure everything was cool. Hey, how you doing? Some other cool features about this LCD viewfinder built into it are not just a waveform monitor. Check that out. Can you get a close-up on my uh, LCD monitor verge, please? Check out that waveform monitor in the right-hand corner. All right. I can also pull up a vector scope. Pretty cool, important, you know, to check your legal values. And there's another setting that is a three-stage waveform monitor for checking very sensitive edge balance when you've got sort of three or just two. If you've got multiple areas on, the, on your shot that have hard edges and you want to check your waveform across all three of them. It's tough to see, but there are three red boxes, and the waveform monitor on the bottom of the screen changes to, to show them. If you're sick of that, just hit the waveform mo monitor button again, and it totally disappears. Additionally, you can turn all of that information off of your waveform monitor just by hitting the battery display button. That's really nice. Now, you saw that we could turn the LCD monitor information upside down. Another thing you want to note about this camera that makes it special, you can change actually the recording from right side up to upside down. 
So if you're using Cinevate, if you're using some of these prime lens adapters that flip the image of your camera, they flip the y-axis, you can undo that flip in the, in the mechanics of the camera. It's kind of a nifty tool so that you don't have to go back and do it in post. Cool? Yeah. All right. There are a couple other things I want to show you that are, uh, that are physical on the camera. Take a look on the back here. Two CF slots, compact flash cards. Uh, Chucky, who's the manufacturer you guys have been liking? All of them work great, but uh, Sandus right now is one that uh, they've been testing with. Can, can you give me that one more time for the mic? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Any card will work at this point, but uh, I know that they've been testing all the Sandus ones, and they seem to work just fine. Great. So any cards are going to work. Any compact flash cards are going to work in the camera. Um, Canon has been doing extensive testing with the SanDisk cards. Something you may want to know, a 32 gigabyte card recording at 50 megabits per second is going to give you more than an hour. It's going to give you somewhere between an hour and 80 minutes. All right? That's pretty impressive. So you get yourself two compact flash cards, one in the top, one in the bottom. You're ready to go. That's more than two hours of recording. The battery, this is really cool. When you eject the battery, it comes shooting out. I like that. Uh, just an ergonomic feature that kind of makes me interested. Additionally, the batteries of this Canon camera are the same in your existing Canon arsenal. So say you bought yourself an XL1 and have been waiting to upgrade to high definition, I hope you saved your batteries because they're going to work in this camera. If you didn't save your batteries, not a problem. We stock them all the time. Call us up and we'll hook you up with them.